Now, the next question is a video. It's uh, from Milo Yiannopoulos in oh, Miami. <laughs> hey, Dr. Peterson, it's uh, Milo Yiannopoulos. Um, you talk a good game about standing up for men and for boys, and you've certainly amassed a big army of them. But a few of us have been wondering recently with your silence on Kavanaugh, your silence on the innocent Covington boys. And then when you've said things like, for instance, when you told the New York Times' Barry Weiss that you thought I might be a racist when you know I'm not, that perhaps your actions aren't matching your words. Can you explain why, although you talk a good game about standing up against social justice warriors and the chaotic feminine, that when it actually comes down to it, you always seem to either fold, stay silent, or betray your allies? Ooh. Jordan. <laughs> Is that live? Yeah. Yeah. Haven't seen Milo for quite a long time. <laughs> so, like being too um, drunk, you and I. well, first of all, I don't believe that I'm obliged to comment on absolutely everything that happens in everywhere in the world. And I don't think that I am betraying my fundamental base um, with regards to what happened with Barry and Milo. Um, Milo, I'd probably just as soon apologize to you for that. I don't think that I did defend you very well at that particular time. I don't believe that you're a racist. It was a question that caught me off guard in an audience that was exceptionally hostile and surreal. And so, insofar as that might be helpful to you, uh, I'd offer you an apology for that. I don't think the rest of your accusations are, are warranted, however. So, that's what I'd like to say. Do you see... I did, by the way, also, Milo, invite you to talk, you know, about a year and a half ago when, when things first started to collapse around you. And we never did get around to that. And I don't believe that that was entirely my fault. We're not going to hear back from him. <laughs> <In fact, laughs> just a video, but um, nonetheless. Um, do you see him and people like him as being in some sort of competition uh, online for the hearts and minds of young men in particular? Because he, he obviously sees it as a competition. Well, I don't really see that I'm in competition with anybody particularly. I'm not trying to be in competition with anybody. And I'm also, by the way, not trying to talk to young men. I mean, one of the things, not specifically, I mean, I'm perfectly happy to be doing that. And by the way, they're not all that young. Um, I think the average age is, is, is somewhere near 35. Um, I, I'm trying to talk to people. And like as a university professor, 80% of my students approximately were women. And that was the case for 30 years. And at least 50% of my colleagues have been women. And there's been this idea generated in the news by news people who keep reading the news that other news people create that somehow I have a coterie of angry, young, white men surrounding me because they're angry about feminism and about all these other isms, let's say. And I don't see it like that at all. I'm trying to suggest to people that their best bet in life, and this is men and women alike, is to adopt as much responsibility as they can for their own lives. And I went through this already because that's where the meaning in life is to be found. And the notion that that's somehow a message that's limited to young men is, it's, it's an absurd message. Okay. Why would that be limited?